a seasoned veteran of 28 years within the athletic department as a coach, administrator, and professor, Earl Reed did it all for the Chaparrales. His 11 seasons as women's basketball head coach included a pair of national championships, along with coaching 11 All-Americans. He served three seasons as head men's basketball coach and served as an assistant in men's tennis and he also was a two-time National Coach of the Year when those teams won national championships. Under Dr. Reed's watch as AD, COD won five national team championships in his four years, including three Natica Cups awarded to the top non-scholarship athletic program in the NJCAA. He served 24 of his 28 years as a professor of physical education. Good evening. I'm honored to be here to introduce Earl Reed to the College of DuPage Athletic Hall of Fame. I had the privilege of working alongside Earl in the women's basketball program for 10 years. First and foremost, I want to congratulate Earl on this well-deserved honor. Um, I really am happy for Earl to receive this recognition for his 28 years of service at the College of DuPage, both as a coach and an administrator. And um, he made a lot of great contributions to the athletic department. Earl received many accolades as a coach. His coaching tenure was winning championships at the regional level, at the national level, and at the conference level. Earl was a disciplined coach. He focused and built his program on the pillars of recruiting, player development, practice planning, game preparation, and mentoring student athletes. He excelled in all of these areas and was committed to giving his best to ensure that his teams achieved at the highest level. Earl worked hard to build a program that was respected both locally and nationally. His teams were consistently ranked in the top 10 at the national level. The success of his program really started with the recruiting process. Um, Earl recruited athletes that were good players, they were good people, they wanted to excel not only on the court but off the court as well. And the first step in the recruiting process for Earl was always to make a visit to the home of any prospective student athlete that he might be recruiting. He wanted to get buy-in not only from the student athlete, but he wanted to get buy-in from their families. He really wanted to build his program based on a culture of family. And I believe a lot of his success came uh, because of the way that he started by recruiting the student athletes from the perspective of home first and then getting them to buy into our program as a basketball program. He really valued their support. He spent time getting to know the parents. He spent time getting to know their siblings. And our teams all had a spirit of togetherness. Um, our student athletes and our families got on board right from the start. Earl was a great teacher of the game of basketball. I often marveled at his, the way he could masterfully take a skill and break it down um, into parts. He could teach it to his players and they could execute it with accuracy. He was great at teaching skills in progression. He could teach offensive sets and parts. Um, his defense was definitely his forte. You know, we spent a lot of time working on defense and um, we primarily played man-to-man -man defense. His teams were known as a man-to-man -man type team, um, and we really got after it on the defensive end of the floor. If players weren't getting the job done on the defensive end of the floor, they were probably going to be sitting on the bench next to me and Earl. Um, and Earl would always tell the team, you know, anybody can play defense. Um, defense is really all about heart and effort. Heart and effort. That's all that it is. And he instilled that in his players each and every day. Our practices were detailed, they were thorough, they were executed with timeliness, they were always challenging. Every day, Earl and I would meet before practice, we would plan out practice down to the minute. I mean, we would lay out what we were gonna work on that day and we had it timed minute by minute as to what needed to be done. Um, our teams were physically and mentally conditioned so that we could really handle anything that a team threw at us, we had an answer for it. Um, we scouted every opponent. Sometimes we scouted them two times, sometimes three times, depending upon what we needed to see. Back in the day, we didn't have all the technology that there is today, so we didn't have a lot of game film to look at, but we would physically go to gyms, we would sit, we would watch games, and we would come up with a scouting report. We would give our players a written report of their matchups, who they were gonna be guarding, what our defensive plan was, what our offensive plan was. We'd make goals for each individual game. And, you know, we did this because we wanted to ensure that we were getting our teams prepared, ready to play, no matter who we were playing against. 
Of course, our number one goal was we always wanted to win, and uh, but we wanted to make sure that winning or losing, our teams always stayed together and they played together. One thing you could always count on was Earl's teams were prepared and they were very well coached. Earl took his role of mentoring student athletes very seriously. He knew his players on a personal level and he wanted them to be successful not only on the basketball court, but be successful people as well. Team meetings were important, but individual player meetings were even more important. Earl would often meet with players just to bring them in, check in, see how they were doing, how classes were going, how their families were doing, really just to kind of check in and see if they needed help or any support in any way. And this wasn't an uncommon thing with Earl. He really worked hard to build those relationships with his student athletes. The players had a sense of trust. They trusted Earl and they could confide in him if they did need something. Um, again, I think this was another reason why Earl was so successful as a basketball coach, because his players believed in him and they trusted in him. Earl was a pretty intense coach, uh, both at practice and during games. He knew how to motivate his team. If, he's not, if he wasn't happy about something, you'd hear about it. You would definitely hear about it. If we were playing well, things were going well, we were winning, let's say at halftime, he might come in and just kind of recap what we did well in the first 20 minutes of the game, maybe talk a little bit about what we needed to focus on for the second half. But if things weren't going well, we weren't playing well, we weren't executing that game plan the way that he wanted us to, you knew Earl was upset, you were gonna hear about it. And I always like to tease Earl, but he had this little lip quiver that would kind of happen when he'd get real upset and his bottom lip would start shaking. And I would think, uh-oh, here it goes. He's going he's gonna to let him have it. Um, but I have to say that as much as that happened, we would always come back out in the second half and really, really play unbelievable basketball. It would be a blazing start to the second half. Um, so I teased Earl a lot about that lip quivering. And I said, you know, we won many games in the second half following those fiery halftime speeches when that bottom lip really started shaking. Earl was always professional. He, res he was respected by opposing teams, their coaches, and the officials. If College of DuPage women's basketball was playing, you could expect good sportsmanship, you could expect good athletic competitive athletes, and you could expect quality basketball. It started from the top down and Earl led by example. He was also a fabulous dresser. I always um, had to note Earl's great style. On game days, you'd often find him roaming the sidelines in a very stylish suit and tie and matching shoes to go along. He had class and he led his basketball program with class. For me personally, Earl was a great mentor um, and friend. I valued our years of coaching together. I especially valued our friendship Earl and I had fun coaching together. Uh, we had fun coaching together because we really enjoyed what we did and we loved the athletes that we coached. I have so many great memories um, of women's basketball here at COD that I will always cherish. I'm certain if every player could be here tonight, they would say, thank you, Coach Reed. Thank you for investing in the College of DuPage women's basketball program. Thank you for our shared experiences and thank you for investing in our lives as people. I too say thank you, Coach Reed. Thank you for the honor of working alongside you for over a decade. Thank you for your friendship. And I congratulate you on this wonderful honor, your induction into the College of DuPage Athletic Hall of Fame. Dr. Thomas Earl Reed, a coach, administrator, and professor during his 28 years at COD, served as the head women's basketball coach for 11 seasons from 1991 to 2002. His teams won two NJCAA championships in 2000 and 2002, five Region 4 titles, 1996, 1998, 1999, 2000, and 2002, and coached 11 All-Americans. He also coached the men's program for three seasons from 2014 to 2016, and served as an assistant men's tennis coach from 1995 to 1997, helping the Chaps to an NJCAA title in 1997. COD won five NJCAA team titles in his four years as athletics director from 2002 to 2006, and earned three Dactronic Cup awards, emblematic of the nation's top non-scholarship program of the year honors in 2004, 5, and 6. 
He served 24 of his 28 years as a professor of physical education. Thank you, that was, Beth, that's amazing. Uh, first and foremost, um, I give honor to God, who is the head of my life, and it's because of his grace and mercy I stand before you this evening. I want to acknowledge my beautiful wife, Makita Lewis-Reed, for her continued support. I am grateful for your insightful perspective and the way you enrich our lives with your knowledge. You are not only my partner, but my best friend and confidant. Thank you, Beth. Thank you, Beth Mitchell, for the outstanding introduction. I kind of figured it was going to be an outstanding introduction. Uh, I cherish your friendship. You are a phenomenal associate head coach and a head coach in your own right. And your contributions never went unnoticed. And I am deeply grateful for all that you did during our amazing, our amazing run. Thank you to the committee members. I am humbled and grateful that you selected me to this very prestigious club. And I also want to thank and honor the other inductees tonight. Um, I would also like to thank the team. And, and that's my assistant coaches and the administrative staff during my tenure as a head coach, professor, and administrator. Thank you, Chris Nelson, Christy McChris, Chris Cotton, Beth Mitchell, William Anderson, Barry Froley, and the late Phil Broom regarding the athletic coaching team. And the administrative team, Luann Zimick, who was the associate athletic director, Sue Venna, Lisa Odo, and again, Beth Mitchell, who were the administrative staff for both athletics and physical education during my tenure as the AD and associate dean of uh, physical education. Thank you. To my colleagues, Don Kloss, Jane Vachev, Gail Tate, Ron Otteson, the late Bob McDougall, Bill Pearson, Dave Webster, Stephanie Vlock, Donna Olson, Al Kaltoffin, Sue Brody, Wes Fritz, Matt Foster, Matt Cousin, Mark Gamble, Max Bertman, Julie Roman, Mike Bell, Natalie Sanderson, and Jason Hunter. I know that I'm probably missing some, but thank all of you guys for being an outstanding team and staff members. Thank you to all the student athletes who played on our athletic teams, I was privileged to oversee. This award is not possible without your support and the belief that you had in the programs you were a part of. I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge Dr. Ralph Miller, who was not only a good friend, but an outstanding mentor. Thank you, Ralph. And there's so many others, um, Jesse Chick, Ron, and Valerie Knight and uh, Sean Connor, um, the men, some of the men's team, Dion Thomas, Chris Chambliss. Uh, thank all of you. I know I'm missing some. Daryl in the back. Thank you all. And the presidents who served during my 29 years at the College of DuPage, Dr. Hal Mackinich, Dr. Michael Murphy, Dr. Sunil Chan, Dr. Robert Bruder, Dr. Ann Rondeau, and Dr. Brian Caputo. Uh, it's my understanding that uh, this is Brian's uh, last year. He'll be retiring. And, and thank you for being a, a, a very special friend and all the contributions that you made to the athletic department. Uh, it's not, did not go unnoticed. Thank you so much. You know, as I reflect on my tenure at the College of DuPage, I had an epiphany regarding the amazing experiences as a coach, administrator, and professor, and during this reflection, the words developmental zone culture resonated in my mind. Now, developmental zone culture, it's not a new term. It's used by a lot of organizations, and it's really just the organizing principle that unifies everything. Sports programs, 
departments, organizations. Simply stated, it was the principle that the way things were done at the College of DuPage, particularly in the athletic department. And there was a four-tier approach to the team, and that was my administrative staff and my coaching staff that supported me, that used and modeled to shape the culture of the programs we facilitated. I believe this four-tier approach was the footprints of the successes we experienced. And I define what the team, the term, meant to me. And again, I was administrators and administrative staff and the coaching staff. The first tier is what I termed single goal leader. And the single goal leader shapes and defines the culture. And that was the institution, faculty, administrators, classified staff that developed the mission and philosophy of the institution. And although it changed periodically, basically it was students first or in my experience, student athletes first. Our decisions regarding athletic, the athletic programs were based on the premise of student athletes first. The second tier is a term called our double goal coaches. And the first goal was to strive to win. And if you take a stroll over to the athletic department and you notice all of the banners and trophies uh, we did that. Winning was something that was a culture at the College of DuPage. But the second goal, and probably the most important, was that we taught life lessons. We, the coaching and administrative team members, used the trials and tribulations that come from being a sports competitor to teach life lessons. The third tier were the parents, or those who were I call spot positive sports parents. We made sure, and this is my coaching staff, that we met with every parent in the program and we got them to buy into the concept of teaching life lessons as it pertained to their sons and or daughters participating in a competitive sport. It was important that the parents coincide with our coaching team philosophy of teaching life lessons those lessons that when they came home from a very tough practice or a very tough game, that the parents were also talking to them about how this was going to help build them as individuals. And the fourth tier was our athletes, or I'll call them, use the term, triple impact competitors. We believe that better athletes make better people. First and foremost, first and foremost we wanted to respect themselves, that when they looked in the mirror, they were proud of the person that they saw. Second, we wanted them to respect their teammates, and that's pretty evident tonight of our teams that there are a lot of players here, Dion and Don, Dan Howard and Jessica Stacy, all of them supporting their teammates. That when they look, uh, excuse me, and second, we want them to respect their teammates, and that's evident tonight. Several teammates are here to support Bridget being inducted into this prestigious club. And the third thing we taught was to respect the game. I'll use the word roots, and the acronym for roots was, one, respect the game, respect opponents, respect officials, teammates, and staff and self. The goal was that when they finished their academic and sports participation career at, the C at COD, that they would take all of their experiences and use them to become respected citizens in society. In closing, you did not hear me use the words Hall of Fame. I did not join the coaching and teaching profession seeking fame. If my name comes up in conversation, I hope the word committed is used to define my legacy. That Dr. Thomas Earl Reed was committed to being the best professor, coach, and administrator, not only at the College of DuPage, 
but the other colleges I had the privilege of serving throughout my professional career. Thank you.